The self-indulgent King George IV made Brighton in the late 18th century a fashionable resort for the well-to-do. Previously a declining fishing village, but already it was a place to take the cure. His legacy that we can still see today is the Royal Pavilion, a fantastic vision of the East, which evolved over 40 years to become a lavish Oriental fantasy that reflected George's changing status from Prince of Wales to King. It was completed in 1823 to designs by John Nash, who transformed the previous building into a palace for entertainment. Purchase the excellent official guide if you want to know more. Personal photography is permitted inside the pavilion, but no tripods or flash, so it is down to hand-holding everything. Should it affect you, there is also a ban on selfie sticks. For convenience and flexibility, I restricted myself to the OM system OM5 and the 12 to 45 Pro lens, an optic of very high quality. Although it does not have an image stabilizer, the one in the camera covered potential problems, something I have increasingly discovered since I acquired the camera earlier in the year. I used nothing else during the shoot, but holding my breath did help. Expect high contrast inside the pavilion, even in areas where it is unremittingly dark and unfortunately a lovely sunny day does not help, even though the blinds were drawn down to protect the precious artefacts. Although I could have handheld using HD Ah, with the OM5, I resorted to my tried and trusted method of shooting with post-production in mind, an expertise I have slowly gained over time and through experience. An unexpected benefit of micro four-thirds is extended depth of field, essential in low light at f4. If you understand traditional photography, you can still have differential focusing at other settings. So please don't listen to people who say you can't. They are wrong. The figures might be different, but it does work. Matters come together with this shot. Now this is out of camera with no adjustments. And now with adjustments in Adobe Lightroom. The numbers might shock you. It is like the well-known saying, provided we start together and finish together, then to hell with what goes on in the middle. I do feel at times we are driven too much by technique, numbers, and what we think is right, and not what we end up with, however achieved. If the technique is damned as wrong, then in the art world you are in good company. I spot meters near a highlight but not on it, so that they stood a chance of recovery from overexposure. That takes experience, and not by just pressing a few buttons. I had the camera on program, as by default it will use the largest aperture, so I kept the ISO 200 for quality. At f4 it is sharp from front to back at a thirteenth of a second, and of course handheld helped by two stout legs which unfortunately do not merit public exhibition. I will finish with a few more shots done this way. <laughs> 